Larry Schiller, voice of Backgammon, and we're, we're going to talk today at the New York Metro Open on both what is the voice of Backgammon and what are Gammon Points and how it benefits the Backgammon community, why this is all going on. We're streaming live on Facebook, Twitch.tv, and YouTube, uh, and this, this video will be archived for future viewing. Uh, let me start by introducing myself. Um, I'm Larry Schiller and uh, play occasional tournaments. I'm not a great player, but love the game. And my mission really is to bring more people into the game. I think it's just this intellectually stimulating activity with a lot of great people in the community. And uh, this is why um, uh, I'm so interested in promoting it and seeing that uh, other people have benefited from the game in way ways that I have. Uh, the, the way that uh, we're making this happen are two basic ways. So one, with the voice of backgammon, which you're watching now, is a way for us to do st live streaming and commentary on major backgammon matches throughout the world. Uh, we, uh, we, you know, I, I, I'm the quote personality, but you know, I'm not a great backgammon player. I love the game. I study. I take lessons. But there are great, great players in the world like Mochi, Super Grandmaster Mochi, and Akiko, and Steve Sachs is here, and Victor Ashkenazi was here earlier, and they're just fantastic players from all over the world, all the Danes. So we have a relationship with the BMAB, the Backgammon Masters Awarding Body, which is uh, at uh, bgmastersab.com or .org. And they are responsible for conferring titles on players based on how well they play from a PR performance rating standpoint. So uh, we have a relationship with the BMAB whereby they are providing voice of backgammon with uh, BMAB talent uh, at these tournaments. So for example, Mochi, uh, if, as long as he's not playing, obviously will be participating as my co-commentator, as providing expert commentary uh, for these matches during the tournament. And these will be live broadcast, and they get a lot of viewers. I mean, a lot of people, you know, thousands of people watch these things uh, over time, and uh, so they're, they're quite popular. In addition to the relationship with BMAB, uh, you know, we work closely with the USPGF. We, we uh, like to have sponsors, uh, f you know, we'd like to sponsor them and let people know USPGF is doing great things for the backgammon community. Um, and Voice of Backgammon also has its own sponsor, John Perner. Gammon Stuff is sponsoring us and we provide lots of posts. So every day, uh, what are the different activities Voice of Backgammon is doing to promote the game? So we certainly do the live streaming commentary it shows. And we have this nice setup with high quality audio and video. We're streaming now. Welcome, Frank. And, uh, and we have the expert co-host. So it adds credibility. You know, every other sport, major sport, has someone like this providing commentary and adding a believability and authority to the game. We don't, we have, up to now, we haven't had that in Backgammon. Backgammon needs that. So this is filling a really important hole for the game. Um, all right, and uh, so we're working with BMAB, USBGF, working with UKBGF, other international organizations um, to bring uh, live streaming. And what we found, I had a gentleman here, uh, 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 young guys in his 20s, came here, works for Hedge Fund in New York, <laughs> plays back at him for fun, and sometimes for money, he's learning a student of the game. Came up, and he came up to me, and he said, you know, Larry, I really enjoy your videos, and I have a lot of people telling me how much they enjoy the commentary. He said, you inspired me to, 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 to play a better game of backgammon. So we have a great opportunity, uh, in some ways, to catch up with the rest of the world. Al Stig, how are you? Uh, so uh, anyway, so that, that's what's happening with Voice of Backgammon. And, and the goal is to get people really just caught up in the game, uh, enjoying it. Twitch.tv has literally millions of followers. And we're on Twitch.tv right now at twitch.tv slash Voice of Backgammon. Uh, these are archived, and people can come and watch those videos. And they're, they're turning out to be quite popular. Hello, Chris Trencher. Karen Davis, welcome. Uh, we, all the dignitaries are showing up. Uh, so th that's Voice of Backgammon's role. Also, I want to mention, as we're talking here, if you guys have any particular questions, I have a second mic. And so you're welcome to just come up and talk into the mic, and we can get your questions. And hopefully I'll have some pithy answer for you about it. Along with Voice of Backgammon, in terms of promoting Backgammon worldwide, helping people join the game, you know, there's lots of little local clubs. People show up, and typically millennials, you know, 20-somethings 20, 20 who are playing this game. They're professionals. They have a job. They have some free time. They don't have a spouse yet. They're looking for a mate. They want to do something interesting, intellectually stimulating in their spare time. 
and have a beer. So what else can we fill a bill on all those things except for backgammon? We can go out with friends on a Monday or Tuesday night, do something for a couple of hours, have a lot of fun, meet new people, maybe your future mate. Backgammon provides that opportunity. We're targeting that, I'm targeting that as a particular market for growth in this game. And doing that through uh, the, uh, this thing that uh, we, we've been working on now called Gammon Points. So I wanted to bring that up and uh, show you what's involved there. And let's see if I can switch this screen over to Gammon Points and demonstrate what's happening uh, in this area, what the goal is. So right now, you've got ABT Points, American Backgammon Tour, owned by the USPGF. And so people who are playing these big tournaments, uh, the 1,100 members of the USPGF, a lot of those folks are big tournament players, right? The, you know, the big percentage of them. And so uh, there are points there, and people compete for those. They love that. End of the year tournament comes by, Candace in LA. She had a lot of people who uh, wanted to win that ABT race for 2017. People really get involved in that, but not just big tournament players. Everybody likes that, even if there's not money involved. If you go to the local level and you have eight players and they show up every Monday night at O'Neill's Bar in Norwalk, Connecticut, they compete for those points. They want to win those points. They want to win the race. And they want to see their name in print. They want to see it on a website. They want to brag to their friends. It's a nice bragging factor. But there isn't any way right now, internationally, there's a fair and equitable system for uh, uh, providing and disseminating information about those points until now. Now we have Gammon Points. And so GammonPoints.com is the website and the app. It's a fully responsive app that works on your phone or a tablet. Gammon Points it provides uh, points for the winners. You don't get points for showing up. You get points for winning or coming in second, placing in a tournament. And it's the points you get are based on only two factors how many people are playing in the event, and what is the strength of field in that event. So in other words, I, we don't care. Gammon Points doesn't care if it's an open tournament, a masters, a novice, intermediate. Because in a novice tournament, the strength of field is going to be low, and the Gammon Points will be low. In an open event where the strength of field is high, if great players are playing, there will be many more Gammon Points that are awarded. So that's the basic concept. We brought, hello, Lynn Ehrlich, the tournament director of the New York Metro. Honored to have you here. So the gaming points are designed in such a way that players locally can show up every week, compete for this, see their name in print. Uh, I was, Karen Davis and I have spoken about the possibility of having these people show up in Primetime Magazine every quarter, the winners of these local clubs. Imagine that. You're in a local club, all of a sudden you're in a, a national, international magazine. How cool would that be? Believe me, people cut off their right arm to see their name in print in a magazine like that for the bragging rights that they get. So. This is uh, an exciting thing for local players. And uh, what I'd like to do is actually do a quick walkthrough of the app for you so you can see how it, how it actually works. Uh, so let's go ahead and do that. Um, I'll, here it is here. I'm going to essentially sign in for this tournament. So this is a director login. And directors, uh, you know, gammon points are like a currency. Uh, so we have to be very careful about who is a tournament director. One of the questions I get is, does this work for online tournaments where people, frankly, can cheat? And if, if it's a currency, people are going to want to get more and more gammon points. The problem with, US, with the, um, the, the bridge, ACBL, is they have points inflation. So this system is designed to avoid points inflation. We're looking long, you know, down the road to make sure we avoid some of the problems other organizations have had. Here is the dashboard for uh, Lynn. Uh, at this event. We, we, so far, we've got 178 players in the database. And these are the uh, players in their clubs, and we can see uh, uh, their lifetime gammon points and the events that she's running here at this, uh, right here at the New York Metro are here. Let's take a look at one of these events. Let's take a look at, let's say, the, um, let's go to the Open, the championship, and see how many people are playing in the championship and take a look at what their situation is. So, tons of players here. Oh, a couple of things I want to point out. Gammon points are rewarded for doubles. How cool is this? Now think about what this means for the game. So you might say, so what? Well, first of all, ABT points are never awarded for singles event, uh, anything but singles. And now imagine that you start awarding points for doubles. You can have as few as four doubles teams, and the, the winning team will get gammon points. Obviously, the two players on the team share the points. What this means is that local clubs, now the better players who are the local clubs are going to be in demand. 
And you're going to have new players coming in and saying, can I play with you? Hey, I'll buy you a beer. I'll buy you dinner. Whatever. To play with me so I can win some gaming points and learn something by playing with you. Now there's a real incentive for players to do this. And think of all the social things that are going to happen around that. Very cool. But now take it up a level. Many bridge players make their living by being the, by being the bridge partner on a partnership team of, pe of lesser players who pay them to be their partner. So that doesn't happen in backhand and by and large right now. Phil Simborg has some people that are coming by and saying, oh, I'll pay your entry fee. And be, but we're not talking about anybody making 500 bucks or something for being a partner. Now that can start to happen in backgammon. People like Mochi and Akiko and the great giants of the world can now start making a living at backgammon. And the more people we have like that, the bigger the game is going to get, the more attention it's going to get internationally. So these gambling points are designed to facilitate that growth. When the tournament director comes here, they can set it up as singles or doubles. And now here are the events players. And there's a lot of them, right? The, by the way, the director, they can just upload an Excel spreadsheet. The system is a little like machine learning intelligent. It'll figure out what's the email, first name, last name, and just add it to the database. No problem. No must, no fuss. Somebody's not in. You just click their name. They take them out of the event. What we've done here, I put Akiko in as first because she came up first. But, you know, we could, we could say, oh, maybe Akiko came in second and Alan came in, you know, fourth. And maybe uh, Al came in first. Congratulations, Al, for winning the Open. Uh, you would get 4.70 gammon points. Uh, Kiko, you get 3.19. The formula behind this, I'm not going to go into those details, but it's all transparent. It's on the website, gammonpoints.com. Go to FAQs. Al, in particular, posed some great questions, uh, and we actually attributed the questions to him. You'll see his name on the website, along with the questions that he asked about how, what are some of the, the nitty details about how this actually works. Great. So this is how this all happens. At the end, once down here is sort of the summary of all the players, once all the places have been properly specified, and here is eight places, once they were all eight specified properly, a close button will come up. The director could say, okay, I'm done. I'm closing the event. And now the gamma points actually get awarded to the players. Uh, below this is a very cool feature for tournament directors. They have a chat feature. If I were to type in something now, I'm not going to because I'm not Lynn, but if I were to type in something now, all 83 players are going to get a message on their Gammon Points app saying, hey, the, the, you know, your next match is at 12.30 or here are the pairings for round three or whatever. And, and, and a future feature, I'll have the ability to drag and drop pictures into that. So you can actually see who your opponents are and be able to find them. So this opens up all kinds of possibilities because now you can actually you know, uh, really facilitate the, make a, a tournament much, much more efficient. Great. Any questions so far about how this all works uh, and what the point is? So that's gammon points. And then uh, uh, there's a dashboard of um, all the uh, players that are in all clubs. And here you can see, even though this is you know temporary, it hasn't been fully assigned. Al, you got you know lifetime 4.70 points. Akiko's got 3.19. When the tournament closes, those will become official. Yes. Yeah. So the spreadsheet tells you who the players are in the event, and then you manually go in and say, "He, this person came in first, second, third, fourth." Okay. But the system takes care of, like, say, someone who just won one match in the first round and then didn't win anything else. Do they get any? Nope. They get nothing. You got to come in first, second, third, or fourth. Okay. Or if there's eight players, first through eighth, in order to win any gammon points, you get no credit for gammon points for showing up and playing. You got to win something. Yes. So if, if we're encouraging participation and people getting, you know, seeing themselves in numbers, why wouldn't we give people Great. something for participating? So Al's question is, why not give people something for participating? Isn't that what's going to encourage them to come? I, I completely agree. What, what the approach we've taken with that is not to award them. So we have a lot of options about how we can encourage them. One option that's off the table for us is awarding them gammon points. But one option that we think will work great is badges. So we have a badge system that's not shown here yet, where people earn experience badges for showing up. So every time they show up, they get a little endorphin release from this cool thing on their screen that says, hey, you want an experience badge? And there are going to be experience badge rankings. So people can actually see themselves in print again from, from that uh, experience. So I, I, it's a great point, And I agree with you. That encourage people want that to show up, right? Absolute great point. What about just winning matches? Now, uh, so uh, Frank's asking, what, what about if you just win a match? You get nothing for winning a match. You've got to win enough matches to, to place. The, 
one of the, the things about this after talking to tournament directors, look, you can pay to eight places, but if the tournament has 16 people, we can only award four of them gammon points. So you can award any of them cash or anything else you want to, but for gammon points, we need a level playing field. If you have 16 players, it pays to four places. I don't care if you're in Denmark, Sochi, or New Jersey. That's all the same. Uh, completely level. That's the only uh, uh, restriction that we place on it. So we don't care intermediate who you play, who you win, who you lose, what your one loss percentage is, any of that stuff. We will be able to give you a percentage of how often you place based on how many times you play, but that's it. So the strength of field is what matters. And you might say, well, it's a little unfair because I had to beat Victor Eskenazi, Akiko, and Ed Laughlin in order to get into the finals, and somebody else played three beginners and got into the finals. But, well, sorry, okay? That's just the luck of the draw. But the strength of the field is going to be high if you have those kind of players. So if you're, you're a finalist, you're going to win more gammon points. So let's say we have a club in Austin that has 30 players, and we do one bracket. Or let's say, no, we do two brackets. We do an open and intermediate. Right. And in Connecticut, you have the same number of people, but you just do one, one event. So What's the relation of the gammon points? So yeah, so it's a function of the number of players and the strength of the field. So if you have one bracket with 30 players, they're going to earn more gammon points. But the strength of the field is lower, they're going to earn relatively fewer gammon points. So you're open tournament with 15 players. They're strong. Even though there's fewer players, that's going to reduce it. There's stronger players, that's going to increase the gammon points. And it's just a question of the formula and how that's going to work. Okay, so the formula takes into account how many, how many rounds it took to get there. Well, again, it could be Swiss. Could be, we don't care about the format. We just care about how many players. Well, let's say that, that in, and I'm, not, I'm just trying to get the clarity. So in, in Boston, we have a 16-man open draw. Yep. Upper level, expert, right? And in Connecticut, you have a 16 person, uh, you only get 16 people. Across the board. Right, but we had 16 and 16. Right, right. You're saying? Your 16 experts will earn a lot more gammon points than Ross's 16 across the board. Okay, what if Ross had 32? Then, well, it's a question of the formula. I can't give you an exact answer. I'd have to look at the numbers. But probably if he had 32 novices and you had 16 experts, first place would garner probably something fairly similar, okay. I think based on, on those numbers. Uh, but we have those numbers posted at times. You take the reciprocal of each person's gammon points, you add them all up. I'm going to get a little math on you right now. So you add them all up, you get 8 tenths, you take the reciprocal, you get 10 eighths. Multiply by the number of people in the field, that's 8. That's 80 eighths or 10. And, and, and so that is how you figure out the strength of the field. Now, in the beginning, Everybody's got zero. You can't take one over zero, right? You can't take the reciprocal. So we assign a minimum of 10 gammon points for the purposes of, a, of calculating the strength of the field. And what that means is beginners have a little bit of an advantage in the beginning to earn a, a fractional uh, more gammon points to keep them involved and keep them going. Now it's 10:25, and I promised I'd be over by 10:30 because we have matches that are starting. So uh, what I, one of the things that I, I would like to do here is first encourage you to uh, join us on Voice of Backgammon at Twitch TV, YouTube. Be please become a subscriber. Becoming a subscriber helps get. They will start promoting you when you have more subscribers. So please subscribe everywhere we are, and the specific places are YouTube. Just Google Voice of Backgammon on YouTube. Twitch.tv slash Voice of Backgammon and uh, Voice of Backgammon.com. Uh, we're also on Facebook. Become a friend. So those are the four places that we are on Voice of Backgammon. Gammonpoints.com. Only directors can add players. So you can't register as a player. A director has to say, you're playing in my event. That's how you're, you, you get into the system. So if you're not in the system, you'll be in the system if you're here. But in your local club, tell your director, please add me. I want to be... In, I want to earn gammon points and let your director know that you're interested. And then it could, it's an easy process for directors to sign on. They have to be approved, they have to confirm their email. You know, I get a hold of it and say, is this a real person? Because again, it's a currency, we want to be sure. Um, and uh, uh, Karen, we, we love working with the USPGF. We're here to support the USPGF. What we'd like to do with our gammon points app is to encourage people, once we have some traction with local tournaments, we have a, a bunch of people already using it and signed up. Uh, and we just started in January this month. 
is uh, we want to offer people the ability to sign up for a novice membership in the USBGF. And uh, so we would like to, you know, have the USBGF offer a little incentive with a, you know, maybe a $5 discount or something. Uh, we've talked a little bit about this, Karen, about how they can work that. And have all these people start coming into the USBGF. The USBGF is 1100 at voice of Um And I'm happy to, uh, or larry.shiller at gmail.com if you like Gmail. I'm more than happy to hear from any and all of you about any questions, concerns, ideas, suggestions, whatever you've got. We're all in this together to promote the game. Thank you all for coming, and good luck in the tournament today.